section 6.1 law of sines. This is the formula that we are going to have when we use law of sines in order to solve triangles. Up until now, all the triangles that we have solved, we've been able to use our right triangle trigonometry, which works for right triangles, but does not work for other triangles. Law of sines and law of cosines, which we're going to be talking about in these lessons, allows us to solve in any type of triangle. One rule when using the law of sines, if possible, always find the smallest angle first when you are using the law of sines. And you'll see why as we go through the next couple of days, along with when we talk about law of cosines, why we want to do that. Second thing, in order to use the law of sines, you must know one complete ratio and any other piece of the triangle in order to solve using law of sines. So I need to know an angle and a side opposite. Remember in this formula, the lowercase letters A, B, and C represent side measures. The uppercase letters A, B, and C represent angle measures. And remember the corresponding side and angle are across from one another. So we need to know a side and an angle opposite and then any other piece of information about the triangle in order to use the law of sines. The ambiguous case occurs when you are given two sides and one angle. If the information you're given about the triangle is two sides and one angle, there could be zero triangles that exist under those conditions. There could be one triangle that exists under those, those conditions, or there could be two triangles that exist under those conditions. And you'll see how we know which of those uh, is true, whether it's zero, one, or two, as we're going through some examples. But you need to remember to identify the ambiguous case by this information being given to you and you must do that as you start the problem otherwise you're not going to know to go and solve for a second triangle if there is one also a short trick that will help you uh, just make it a little bit easier and a little bit quicker to solve these ratios this law of sines can also be written like this sine a over angle a equals sine b over angle b which equals the sine of c over angle C. Not going to be a big deal if you don't do this, but if you do, it's just going to save you a couple of steps, it's going to make solving for a little bit quicker, uh, and you'll see that as well when we look through some examples. So looking at our first example here, first thing I'm going to do is draw pictures of the triangle as far as the conditions that we're given. So in this case, we have an obtuse triangle we know from what we are given, angle C, is 102.3 degrees, angle B is 28.7 degrees, and side B is 27.4 feet. So there's angle A up there. Three missing things that we need to find are side A down here, side C here, and angle A up here. Of those three, we know in a triangle that all three angles always add up to 180. So right away, we know what angle A has to be. Take 180, subtract all uh, those other two angles, and you should get angle A to be 49 degrees. We also need to find side A and side C. Once I find those two, the triangle solved for, we would have all three sides, all three angles. In this case, it does not matter where we go next. We already know all the angles, so we can solve for whatever we want. Let's go ahead and find uh, angle, uh, side A first. The ratio that we know and we were given is involving B. So that's the ratio that we are going to use. We're solving for side A, so let's put the sides in top. So 27.4 over the sine of 28.7 equals the side we're looking for, which is A over the sine of 49. Plug that into your calculator. The reason we want our missing variable in the top, all we need to do is multiply this sine 49 over to the other side and plug that entire expression into our calculator. Let's take a look at that on the calculator. First of all, make sure you're in the correct mode. We need to be in degree mode since our angle measures are in degrees here. Exit out of there. We can go ahead and we should be able to plug all of this in in one step. We have 27.4 times the sine of 49. Divide that then by the sine of 28.7. And 
And there's our first missing side, 43.061 feet. So there's side A. Find side C now. If possible, do not use rounded measures. In other words, we just found side A. We know that that side is a rounded measure. So we're not going to want to use that if possible because it's going to magnify our rounding error as we work through. The ratio that we were given, let's use that one again. Those were exact values that we were given, 27.4 over the sine of 28.7 equals side C now over the sine of 102.3. Once again, plug that entire expression into your calculator. You just need to multiply by the sine of 102.3, so you're going to have 27.4, times the sine of 102.3, divided by the sine of 28.7, and you should get side C to be 55.747 feet. There's the three measures that make up our missing information. Number two, notice here right away that we are given two sides and one angle. Anytime we are given two sides and one angle, you need to identify right away that you are dealing with the ambiguous case. Ambiguous meaning now we do not know whether there is no triangles that can exist under these conditions, whether there's one triangle that exists, or whether there are two triangles that exist. We're going to begin. And I'm going to draw this the same way every time, where I'm going to put the angle that I know down here in the bottom left. That's 42 degrees. I'm going to put the angle that we have to look for next. In other words, under this information, the only thing that we can possibly solve for next is angle B. Okay, the ratio that I know involves A. The only other measurement I know involves B. So I have to solve for angle B next. Whatever angle I'm looking for, I'm always going to put down here in the bottom right. And now we know the side opposite that is 12 units. The side opposite angle A is 22 units. So now from here, you need to use your properties of triangles. What do you know about triangles? Well, angles, the smallest angle on a triangle is across from the smallest side. Biggest angle on a triangle is across from the biggest side, and so on. So in this case, what do I know about angle B compared to angle A? Well, opposite angle B is 12 units. Opposite angle A is 22 units. So because the side across from B is smaller than the side across from A, I'm guaranteed that angle B has to be smaller than angle A. There's only one way that that can occur. Angle B has to be acute. Since angle B has to be acute, we know that one triangle exists under these conditions. Once you have identified that only one triangle exists, go ahead and use your law of sines to begin solving. In this case, we know we have to find angle B first. So the sine of B over 12 equals the sine of A over 22. Plug this into your calculator. 12 times the sine of 42 divided by 22. We're solving for an angle, so that's when we have to go inverse sine of that answer that we just found, hit equals, and there is our angle B. So now we know angle B is 21.406 degrees. If we know angle B, you always are going to solve for the third angle by simply subtracting from 180. Subtract both of those from 180 and we get 116.594 degrees. Last thing we need to find now is side C. Go back to the ratio that we were given at the beginning. We're looking for side C, so now I want the sides up in the top. So C over the sine of 116.594 equals the ratio that we were given, 
involving angle A is 22 over the sine of 42. Plug that into your calculator. 22 times the sine of 116.594 divided by the sine of 42 and you should get 29.4 units. There's the three missing parts for this triangle. Number three, two sides at an angle. Once again, right away at the beginning, you need to identify this as being the ambiguous case. I'm going to set it up the same way every time. Angle that we know down here. Angle that we have to look for next, once again, is going to be angle B. I'm going to put the angle we're looking for there. Across from angle A is 15 units. Side across from angle B is 25 units. Ask yourself the same question. What do we know about angle B, the one that we have to find next, compared to angle A? In this case, the side across from B is 25. Side across from A is 15. That means angle B is bigger than angle A. Now, two things can happen here. Either we have zero triangles or we have two triangles that exist under these conditions. In other words, this side here that is 15 could come down here making angle B be an acute angle somewhere between 85 and 90 or it could come back in this direction toward the 85 degree angle in here and be an obtuse angle. We do not know which one until we go to plug into the law of sines here. So set up your situation. We're finding angle B. So the sine of B over side B equals the sine of A over side A. I'm going to plug this into the calculator. We're going to have 25 times the sine of 85 divided by 15. We go to take the inverse sine of that. Hit enter, we get an error. The reason we get an error, remember sine is only defined between one and negative one. That value that we had was bigger. Therefore, this does not exist which means that no triangle exists under this conditions. We knew right away that there were either zero or two. In this case, there is no triangle that exists, so we're done with that problem. Had we got a solution there, now we would have to go and find a second triangle because we know under these conditions it is not possible to have just one triangle. Number four. <clears throat> Ambiguous case again. Angle A is 110 degrees. Angle we're looking for is angle B. Side across from angle A is 15.2. Side across from angle B is 20. Once again, ask yourself the question, what do you know about angle B compared to angle A? Side across from B is 20. Side across from A is 15.2. That means angle B under these conditions is bigger than angle A. Well, if that's the case, is it possible to have two obtuse triangles here or two obtuse angles within a triangle? No. So we don't need to go any further here. We know that no triangle can exist under those conditions which simply means that the way this is set up with a 110 degree angle and this side being 20 units long, if I have a third side here that is 15.2 units, it is simply not long enough to come back down and connect where angle B is. Therefore, we can't draw a triangle under those conditions. Last one here. Once again, we have the ambiguous case. Set up your triangle. Angle A is 20.5. Angle B is what we need to solve for next. Across from angle B is 31 units. 
across from angle A is 12 units. So under this situation, what do we know about angle B compared to angle A? We know angle B is going to have to be bigger than angle A because the side opposite B is bigger than the side opposite A. So we know angle B is bigger than angle A, which tells us if that's the case that we have zero or two triangles. So now we need to remember that as we go to begin to solve here. Angle B is what we need to solve for first. So the sine of B over 31 equals the sine of 20.5 over 12. Plug that into your calculator. When you plug that in, you get a solution. Since you get a solution, that means there's two triangles. So right away, we're going to call this B1. We know then there's going to be an angle C1 and a side C1 in that triangle. We also know there has to be a second triangle, which we're going to call B2, angle C2, and side C2. From this, when you plug it in, you would have gotten angle B to be 64.783. So let's record that value. 64.783 degrees. We can find side C now by plugging into or subtracting from 180, 180 minus 20.5 minus 64.783 is 94.717 degrees. Let's finish solving that first triangle before we worry about the second one. So now we need to find side C1 over the sine of C, which is 94.717, equals the ratio we know, 12 over the sine of 20.5. Plug that into your calculator, and you're going to get C1 to be 34.149. So there's the three things that make up our first triangle. So we have those three missing sides along with the three give or missing measures along with the three that we were given. Our second triangle now. Our second triangle still has these initial three conditions. A, B, and angle A are still those values. Now, the way that you begin solving in the second triangle is you take the supplement of the angle that you had to find first. In this case, we had to find angle B first. Take 180 minus the 64.783, and that's going to be your angle B2, which is going to be 115.217 degrees. Now to find angle C2, I take 180 minus that value, minus the 20.5, and angle C is going to be 44.283. And now use that new angle C to find your new side C in your second triangle. So now side C2 over the sine of 44.283 equals 12 over the sine of 20.5. Cross multiply, solve, and you're going to get that third side to be 23.924. And there's the ambiguous case in which you have two possible triangles that exist. Both triangles have side A and B the same length, angle A the same measure, but triangle one has these three measures, triangle two has those three measures.